That's where we start our conversation with Saad Mohseni. He is chairman and CEO of Moby Group, joining us live from Dubai. And Saad, thank you for sharing your insights today. We're happy to hear that you are safe and well in Dubai. I wanted to begin by getting your reaction to the situation we find ourselves in here in Afghanistan. We've all seen incredible pictures, devastating pictures emerging over the past week. The situation at Kabul airport clearly continues to deteriorate. At the same time, U.S. officials also now concerned about possible ISIS attacks at the airport. And of course, the U.S. now mobilizing commercial aircraft to get people out. So my first question to you, Saad, what went wrong in Afghanistan and did it have to end this way? No, not at all. It was totally avoidable. Uh, just listening to your guests. I mean, what a bunch of clowns. Uh, he should be hanging his head in shame and resigning immediately. All of these people. Uh, for NATO, the most powerful coalition of the most powerful nation to screw this up and to keep on coming up with excuses and no one's taking responsibility. Even the US president says the buck stops with me and then he goes on to blame everyone else. Uh, the timeline was ridiculous. The way that they transitioned, attempted to transition to the Afghan forces was ridiculous. And the exit, um, you know, and just the fact that they pull out uh, military uh, personnel out first and then worry about the civilians. It's just, you couldn't make this up. Hmm. And Saad, we see now the Taliban continuing to consolidate control over Afghanistan and in particular consolidating control in Kabul. Negotiations are underway about forming a new government, whatever that is going to look like. What's your take on what happens next now? I'm not sure if they're negotiating. I think that they, I don't even know if they're consulting. Uh, some of the people you mentioned, I, I obviously speak to them daily. Um, I, I, they've won. Uh, the, the victory was absolute. Um, I think they may want to be inclusive. And I think this is why the world needs to engage with them to ensure that they're inclusive. Uh, that they, they don't uh, create another sort of uh, government that's very much isolationist uh, and uh, detached from the rest of the world. It's, it's time for the world to actually talk to them, sit down with them and, and uh, indicate, you know, what the carrots are and what the sticks are. Um, the country needs a lot of help. Uh, we have a population of 35 million people. The last time the Taliban were in charge, the population was 21 million. We have three crises. We have a political crisis, we have an economic crisis, and we have a humanitarian crisis. And for them to manage it, they would need international help. Mm. And so the question is whether or not we will see international engagement with the Taliban. Many governments are already saying they're not going to recognize the Taliban as the legitimate leaders of Afghanistan. But this is also a really important moment for you, right? As uh, the executive of one of Afghanistan's largest media businesses, uh, Tolo News actually had a female news anchor uh, interviewing a Taliban official last week. That was a significant moment throughout the course uh, of this crisis and the international community reacting to that. Some seeing it as a statement of defiance, others seeing it as a way for the Taliban to show that they have changed since the days of 9-11. Uh, just your reaction to that moment and take us inside the decision to allow that female newsreader to interview the Taliban official. Well, th th they can make decisions on the spot. Um, and uh, I think the timing was good. She was pre presenting a show and uh, the gentleman showed up and we thought that best, uh, we, we, we asked them and he said yes, uh, which indicates that they do want to show the world that they have changed. As to whether they've really changed, uh, only time will tell. It's an important, as you pointed out, that uh, they're consolidating their rule over the country. They have to win hearts and minds. Uh, they want to show that they're engaged. So they're, they're doing, you know, they're, uh, this is a charm offensive of sorts as well. And uh, But we have to wait. We have to wait for the government to form. We have to look at their policies in relation to women and, uh, and freedom of expression. Uh, it's probably too early to get excited, but it's, a, it's an important positive signal nonetheless.